Hello students, I am Dr. Savita from Maharaja Agrisen University, Baddi, Himachal Pradesh. Power refers to the potential or actual ability to influence others in a desired direction. As an exchange relationship, power occurs in transactions between an agent and a target. The agent is the person using the power and the target is the recipient of the attempt to use power. Different individuals and groups within and outside the organization can exert power. Individual employees including top and middle management, technical analysts and specialists, sports staff and other non-managerial workers can influence the actions an organization takes to reach its goals. Formal groups of employees such as various departments, work teams, management councils, task forces or employee unions as well as informal groups such as those workers with offices near each other or those who see each other socially can similarly exercise power. Non-employees may also try to influence the behavior of an organization and its members, owners, suppliers, clients, competitors, employee unions, the general public and directors of the organization may extend power that affects the organization. Defining power. Salancic and Ferrefer have defined power as the ability of those who possesses power bring about the outcomes they desire. Power is the influence over the beliefs, emotions and behaviors of others at the personal or the professional level. In simple terms, we may define power as the ability of a person or a group A to, inter, uh, to induce another person or group B to behave in a way that the former desires. Two faces of power. Most of us think and perceive power to be negative in nature, even though we are well aware that whatever happens in the world is a game of power and people exert power over others who have lesser bargaining power usually. Nevertheless, there are two faces of power, one negative and the other positive. The negative face of power is characterized by the primitive, unsocial set, need to have dominance over submissive people. The positive face of power is characterized by a socialized need to initiate, influence and lead others in a well-desired and aspired directions. Sources of power in organizations. The main sources of power are 
formal position in the organization and the personality characteristics of the leader formal position in the organization generally it is the power attached to a position in the organization which is more potent than the person who occupies the position for example the position of the president of america is the most prestigious formal power irrespective of the person who mans it the same can be understood true for all the official positions in the organizations like that of a president vice president ceo etc personality characteristics of the leaders this refers to the charisma of personality of an individual which makes him powerful in his personal or professional step up where people tend to follow whatever he does owing to the sheer magic of his persona basis of power john french and bertram raven identified five types of interpersonal power that managers use they are reward coercive legitimate referent and expert power these sources of power are called interpersonal because they involve the relationship between the person who holds power and those who are influenced by him or her reward power when the sources of power is a person's control over rewarding outcomes the power is called reward power for example managers control the rewards of salary increases bonuses and promotions reward power can lead to better performance but only as long as the employee sees a clear and strong link between performance and rewards to use reward power effectively then the manager should be explicit about the behavior being rewarded and should make the connection between the behavior and the reward clear non management employees also may have reward power for example one employee might offer another praise and approval an invitation to a desirable social function or an interesting task in a group project coercive power the manager who exert power by evoking fear has coercive power to curse someone into doing something means to force the person to do it often with threats and punishment managers using coercive power may verbally abuse employees or withhold support from them caution can create stress and anxiety for employees in extreme cases it can even lead to increased absenteeism and turnover and may encourage sabotage at the workplace employees at all levels may exert coercive power through such tactics as ridicule or exclusion of a coworker sexual harassment can be an unethical and illegal use of coercive power coercive power influences others by inducing compliance caution merely prevents undesirable behavior rather than stimulating desirable behavior legitimate power 
which is similar to authority it is the power that is based on position and mutual agreement the agent and target agrees that the agent has the right to influence the target for legitimate power to be effective the employees must believe the manager has the right to tell them what to do legitimate power stems from a person's occupation of a particular position in the organization it is based on the presumption that the organization's structure gives people in some positions the right to influence other people legitimate power especially when wielded by someone higher up the organization hierarchy as authority responses to legitimate power the basic response to legitimate power is internationalization this means we comply because a degree of intrinsic satisfaction results from complying with the order of a person in authority the satisfaction is independent of whether that person doles out reward or punishment limitations of legitimate power because legitimate power arises from a person's position in the urbanization it is effective only for influencing behavior that employees believe falls within the authority of that position when an employee's request or directive falls outside this zone of acceptance other employees will question it and may reject it referent power some people influence others through the forces of their attractiveness the mysterious personal magnetism we call krishna this influence is called referent power the agent has referent power over the target because the target identifies with or want to be like the agent charismatic individuals are often though to have referent power an advantage of holding referent power is that it can lead people to do things that may not result in a tangible reward the reward comes instead from the relationship with the charismatic person however asking for more than people who are willing to do can reduce a person's referent power expert power power that arises from a person's expertise knowledge or talent is called expert power people with expert power are influential because others believe they can benefit from the information expert can provide for expert power to work three conditions must be in place first the target must trust that the information given is accurate second the information involved must be relevant and useful to the target third the target's perception the agent as an expert is crucial approaches to understanding power in organization the source of power determine the source of power determine the process of generation and acquisition of power there are different approaches to understanding power in organizations which are briefly discussed in below figure amarshan's 
power dependence theory second one is French and Raven basis of social power theory. Third one is Slensic and Pezzer's static contingency model. And the last one is Mintzberg genesis of power theory. Emergence power dependence. This theory states that power is inherent in any social relationship in which one person is dependent on the other. French and Raven's basis of social power theory. They have suggested five sources of power that is the reward power, curative power, legitimate power, referent power, and the expert power. Selensing and Pefzer's strategic contingency model. This model asserts that power in organization accrues to organizational subunits that are most important and significant contributors to organizational objectives. Mintzberg Genesis of Power Theory. This theory says that organizational power is built on the premise that organizational behavior is a game in which various players called influencers seek to control organizations decisions and actions organizational politics organizational politics can be understood as intentional acts of influence to enhance or protect the self-interest of individuals or groups in the organization. Just like power, politics is also neither good nor bad, but again has two faces, negative and positive. It seems to be associated with the decision-making, resource allocation and resolution of conflict in the organization. Power tactics used in organizations. The main motive of individuals in organization is to gain power and to gain it they use different tactics. Through using these tactics within their groups or between the groups they influence people and gain power. Power tactics which people use for influencing their co-workers, employees or bosses to be more effective are as under. Formal authority. When the position has formal authority, they fix a deadline for others in the group to comply the orders and do what is expected from them. This is called assertiveness through which they remind others to perform and oblige as per rules. Rationality. When a person using facts and information convinces others in a logical way to comply with, it looks a rational way for compliance for others as competent man. Pressure building. Group of people like trade unions to gain power use pressure building on people as well as organization. But this method may become counterproductive like in the case of threat of strike, organization may go for lookout. Sanctions. To gain more power logically, the persons in power may use organizational rewards and punishment. When they give 
promotions or rise in salary for good work it is called rewards similarly when someone lag behind in performance appraisal continuously his promotion is withheld this is called punishment by using method of sanctions they gain more power competition when the organizational resources are scarce the parties compete with each other to have control over the criteria to be used for resources allocation to gain more power collision when two or more groups in the organization make alliance to gain more it is called collision integrative importance when in an organization a service provider groups services are required by all groups within the organization that service providers group become important and sought after by all group to function effectively that group will have more inter group power bargaining it is another method to gain power when one has already bestowed benefits on others in the past and he reminds others for favor through a process of negotiation to get his work done friend lines through this method a person requests another to do his work through convincing him he convinces another either through flattery or praising his importance prior to request or waiting through friendly or humble way till he is in receptive mood for request higher authority some managers to get the work done from their subordinates may make effort to secure support of higher authorities cooperation it is one of the intergroup part tactics in this method one group gives some of its important positions to members of other group to have a control on the policy making committees it is called cooptation through this method they remove the chances of being criticized by other group for decision taken in the committees politics and collisions politics is individual or group behavior that is informal parochial typically divisive and above all illegitimate because decisions are made in the best interest of individuals or groups rather than the best interests of the organization collisions collisions are groups of individuals who bargain in an effort to get resources distributed in their favor collisions are groups outside the organization that try to influence the organization for example taxpayers teacher associations and citizens three types of external collisions dominated external collisions one powerful outside group dominates school policy that is back to basics promotes a powerful force that affects what happens internally divided external collision a few groups two or three compete for influence influence is balanced but competition is there for example conservative versus liberal power struggle spills over into the organization thirdly 
passive external collision so many groups that par is dispersed creates a relatively peaceful and stable environment consequences of external collisions a dominated external collisions weakens internal collisions a divided external collision politicized internal collisions a passive external collisions strengthens internal collisions often at the level of central administration internal collisions internal collisions are groups inside the organization that try to influence the organization for example taxpayer teacher associations and citizenship personalized internal collisions is one in which power is concentrated in the hierarchy often the chief executive bureaucratic internal collision is also one where power is concentrated in the system of formal authority but here it is concentrated in the bureaucracy rather than a person the bureaucratic rules and procedures ideological internal collision is one in which power is concentrated in the culture of the organization teachers do not merely accept goals and objectives but rather they share them and are committed to them professional internal collision the system of expertise dominates politicized internal collisions pars rest on politics and information power the predicted combination of external and internal collisions are exhibited below in figure 2 triple x depicted most likely combinations double x depicted livelihood x depicted less likely combinations as can be inferred from the above exhibit the most likely predicted combinations of external and internal collisions are depicted by triple x dominated personalized divided and politicized passive and personalized the moderately likely predicted combinations of external and internal collisions are depicted by double x dominated bureaucratic divided bureaucratic passive bureaucratic passive ideological passive professional the less likely predicted combinations of external and internal collisions are depicted by x dominated ideological dominated professional dominated politicized divided personalized divided ideological divided professional passive politicized controlling political behavior in organizations it has already established that political behavior in organizations cannot be done away with at any cost but at the same time efforts can be made to control it to minimize its wrongful impact on the organizational culture the various techniques that can be applied are creating awareness about the various strategies and tactics of political behavior as discussed earlier will enable the employees to take corrective or preventive actions in situation of politicking in organizations and enabling them to manage such situations more effectively and efficiently reducing the uncertainties owing to the implementation of organization change 
and develop interventions by sharing ample information with all the concerned parties to garner their support and commitment from the very beginning rather than giving them chance to resist any kind of change initiatives by encouraging open communication especially with regard to the scarcity of resources and telling those about the allocation of resources will discourage political upheavals in the organization confronting people who encourage political behavior is a very good technique of controlling political behavior in organizations allocating clear job descriptions and responsibilities with well defined assignments will remove any political diplomacy in the organization eliminating collisions by regularly transferring and rotating people on the jobs and discouraging formation of groups and collision politics setting an example by following known political behavior and discouraging and dissuading others to indulge into it the manager can act as a role model for their employees we will discuss impression management this can be defined as the process by which people attempts to control and manipulate the reactions of others to create images of themselves or their ideas this may be manifested and visible in their way of talking walking body language appearance facial expressions handshakes distance maintained while talking etc most of these activities are aimed at creating good impressions on others and the most relevant expression that is created by managers is the upward impression management that is impressing one superior by whatever means like praising and appreciating their efforts publicers in front of their colleagues etc there can be two type of impressions positive and negatives positive impressions are created when the employees are trying to impress their superiors by presenting an upbeat attitude all the times trying not to offend others and dressing for success which is okay if done in moderation but not otherwise overdoing will create a negative impression on others on the other hand there are chances that a person tries to create negative impression on others which is very rare but does take place at times which can be in the form of displaying bad attitude working below one's potential withdrawal from active participation in anything decreasing the performance level and displaying sign of slowing down etc so students let's now summarize what we have learned power is the influence over the beliefs emotions and behaviors of others at the personal or professional level in simple terms we may define power as the ability of a person or group a to induce another person or group b to behave in a way that the former desires there are two phases of power the negative phase of power is characterized by a primitive 
unsocial set need to have dominance over submissive people. The positive face of power is characterized by a socialized need to initiate, influence and lead other in a well-desired and aspired direction. The main sources of power are formal position in the organization and the personality characteristics of the leader. These sources of power are called interpersonal because they involve the relationship between the persons who hold the power and those who are influenced by him or her. There are different approaches to understanding power in organizations, namely the Amersian's power dependence theory, which states that power is inherent in any social relationship in which one person is dependent on the other. French and Raven's basis of social power theory suggested five sources of power. The reward power, corrective power, legitimate power referent power, and expert power. SNP strategic contingency model asserts that power in organization accrues to organizational subunits that are most important and significant contributors to organizational objectives. Mintzberg Genesis of Power Theory says that organizational power is built on the premise that organizational behavior is a game in which various players called influencers seek to control organizations, decisions and actions. Organizational politics can be understood as intentional acts of influence to enhance or protect the self-interest of individuals or groups in the organizations. Various political tactics are used in the organizations which can be controlled by acting wisely and smartly. Thank you.